welcome back to part three, four. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to my marijuana addiction playlist. And this is how I quit weed video. So, as you can see, this is how Nirvana stays calm these days. Oh, I love this sound. It just Anytime I'm feeling like anxious or somebody literally takes me to fucking like when I go there. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, so in today's video, I'm going to be discussing self-awareness, um, what an addictive personality is and how prayer, meditation, mindfulness, whatever word you want to use, and um, also the discussion of good and evil and how that ties into how I stopped also. So I'm going to cover a few things and uh, an activity or two for you to practice suggestion only because Nirvana is never here to tell nobody what to do, okay, because I'm hard-headed. I'm, I am the most, I do what I want here. So for me to expect anybody to do anything I say is like, what? You don't even listen to, let me tell you, y'all know my ancestors, my guides, they be like this, this whole, she just, and she don't want to listen. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> I listen. Okay. I listen now. I, I don't, I don't play with them when they give me the orders, my, you know, etheric people looking out for me. <laughs> giving me the messages or, on what to do. That's the only person I listen to here. And they not even people. They not even physical bodies. So, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm carrying on. Um, I want to get into first um, how I quit. So, like I mentioned in the past last two videos, I believe, um, this was a process of over two years. I, I remember I say two years because... Um, actually about three years ago, four years ago, I remember writing a poem and it was about how I felt about having this attachment, excuse me, <laughs> how I felt about having, um, an attachment to marijuana. Now, the reason why I wrote that poem was because I began realizing that I didn't want any attachments to anything here. Like, I, I didn't want to be emotionally dependent on anything. Not psych meds, not wine every night, not the 420, nothing. Like, I wanted to be emotionally, I wanted all these etheric cords cut off me okay and so this poem was written about three years ago so it's like this has been a few years that i've been going just through a self awareness journey and so i can't really discuss that my me quitting um marijuana without going into that because i like i need for people to realize like all of this is connected Okay, to self-awareness at the end of the day. All of it. Okay. <sighs> Struggles. If you see how I'm having to record this video right now. <laughs> anyway. Um, the first step, I mean, generally, we hear this all the time. It's like admitting you have a problem. But the reason why this is so important as the first step, because it kind of gets the gears turning. If you never ever, like imagine if you never wake up to the fact that you have a problem that you want to stop, there is no way that you will ever stop. The light will never come on, if that makes sense. So um, admitting that I may have had an, had an issue and then admitting that I had an issue. See, there's two different, see, see you're going to see, look, your ego is all it's gonna play so many games with you throughout this process okay it's like maybe you know i don't really have a problem well it's not really a problem but like i would like to stop and then like no you have a problem see because then you don't want to feel that guilt like i mentioned in a previous video but you have to deal with the guilt you know what i mean it's like all these stages you know you relapse in these stages 
You know what I mean? When you try to skip over a step, there, no progress is made. So if you want to try to skip over the step of actually being honest with yourself and being like, this is a fucking problem and I don't want to have this problem anymore. And then why don't I want to have this problem anymore? And then why do I have this problem? It's like you're 21 questioning yourself. You know what I mean? You have to go through that because I had to admit like why I wanted to change. See, that was that was one of the most important important aspects of my process was admitting like why I wanted to stop. See, that was crucial and critical in the whole transformation process because I had a why. And if you ask anybody in business or anybody who has become successful at anything, like wildly successful, um, they have a why. Their why is connected to why they get up in the morning. Their why is connected to like why they do anything. You know what I mean? And so admitting I want us to change and just basically, <sighs> excuse me, why I wanted to change was important. And then going into the good and evil debate, um, which is why it's hard for me to see good and evil here anymore because I, I don't see that. I see things as serving a purpose. You know, so it's like if you want to say, you know, murdering someone is evil, well, you know, you don't want to classify yourself as a murderer, but like, if you're a mom and somebody comes by you and strikes your child with some kind of a hard object over the head, I want to see your reaction to that. You you might turn into a murderer very quickly before your very eyes. <laughs> okay, so like... I don't do the moral good and good and evil there. There's appropriate action for a situation. So in relation to marijuana, there are purposes for it. There's been purposes for it. Um, it has helped people, like I mentioned in my last videos. This is not, you know, any kind of a moral judgment that you should have on yourself. Even if you are doing it recreationally, it's still serving a purpose in your life. It's filling a void that it's filling something that you don't at the time have something else to fill that space with, if that makes sense. So this is how you start understanding that despite what judgments people want to have on you, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that I'm not going to feel guilt because of this. I am not going to further burden myself because this is going to prevent me from getting out of this cyclical ass trap of feeling shitty about myself and feeling low. You know what I'm saying? I'll never be able to feel good about myself if I don't, if I don't deal with this good and evil thing. You know what I mean? So I'm not at all demonizing um, the plant or even people who have addiction. If this is not something to demonize or to be ashamed of, everybody has addictions here. I just need to say that. Every single person. Point to me person. <laughs> okay. Um, some people just have better control over it. I'll, I'll say nine out of ten people here have or is dependent on something. Okay. So... I just need for that to be, you know, whether it's your damn phone, whether it's fucking taking selfies, if it's whatever, coffee again, <laughs> whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? So j just get that out of your mind. You know what I mean? Um, so just trying to think what else I wanted to cover. I wanted to cover a lot. You know what I mean? I didn't want these videos to be edited, so just bear with me. I have some notes here. Um, I remember writing a note, speaking of writing poems about my actual addiction and why I didn't like it and why I wanted to stop. I wrote an actual letter, like a breakup letter, if you want to call it, to the marijuana plant. Now listen, let me tell y'all something right now, okay? 
Mary Jane is like that bad bitch in the club that everybody want and then you get her ass and then it turns into a toxic as fuck codependent relationship fast. <laughs> I mean, she is like the baddest bitch. Yo, what? You are in a really codependent relationship with the baddest bitch on the planet. No, very literally like hypnotic. This is like diabolical I'm talking about <laughs> y'all I know this is sounds might sound funny but I'm telling you this is how I you know like this is how I was I had to personify it you know what I mean and and through personifying it I was able to write a letter to it um and a lot of you might see this as um closing etheric doors closing portals, sealing up your aura, um, ejecting the demon, right? I just use that term because everybody knows generally what a demon is and, or what it represents. I'm not like, anyway. <laughs> so writing a letter that you're not going to allow this demon to utilize your body any longer for purposes of wanting to satiate its addiction. My phone thing is like a loose prostitute right now. Nothing against pro it's just shit is about to fall. I hope it doesn't. But bear with me anyway if the screen is crooked. Um so you know, I wrote a letter to it and basically saying why we need to break up. Like this relationship is not working for me no more. Like, it was cute in the beginning. It was fun. We had a blast. You know what I mean? Like, yo, we had some good times. Don't get me wrong. I still love you, but I'm going to have to love you from back here, though. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'm going to have to love you from back here. So, like, it was, it was like, you know, <laughs> you be serious, but this is what I did. And so, it's basically ending contracts. You know, the thing is, especially with relapse, like I mentioned in my last two videos, is that a part of the relapse cycle starts with not closing these portals. Think about it. When you open up a conversation with a person, generally you say bye, right? Like at the end of my videos, I say bye. I don't, I'm not just ending the video like literally right now with me still talking, okay? Um, when you open a door, you close it. When you get in your car you open the door then you close it like when you come into your house you open the door and you close it and you lock it are you getting my drift a lot of us are not locking our doors i'm just suggesting this we're not closing these doors okay you know i don't have to get too too uh, lofty about this you know what i'm saying we're not closing these doors back and it's allowing these other entities that are lurking around you because you're vibrating at their level. When you have an addiction that lowers your vibration so low, it lowers your vibration to the frequency of these beings that, you know, anyway, so I made sure I closed all of these doors and I spoke directly to these demons that, and listen, they are going to try to come for you, okay? They've tried to come for me, trust me. They'll try to come for you through dreams. They'll show you whatever said drug it is, like whether it's alcohol. They'll like, your dream will be you in a bar getting lit. It'll be you like at a party. Like it'll be the most amazing dream. <laughs> you'll think it's real. And then you'll wake up and be like, oh shit, what the fuck? But see, if... If you're aware that, oh, these are just the fucking demons trying to like, like, hey, you forgot about us. No, I closed the fucking door. Goodbye. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like you have to close these doors and you have to speak directly to the entity, the being, the demon, whatever you want to call it to go 
I do not give you permission any longer to use my body. And then when you have these dreams, you wake up and say, oh, you tried it. You tried it. That was cute. But y'all wasting your time. Y'all might want to go like there's other bodies out here. Like you might want to just go find another body because this door is closed. They can only knock on the door. Yo, they'll knock on the door, <laughs> but you have to let them in. And so once I realized that, that was me claiming my sovereignty as a sober person. Like when I do anything now moving forward in life, it's going to be from a conscious state of mind, not because I was tempted or because I was sad or stressed out. Or It's going to be from a space of conscious, present awareness thinking, not from some underlying running program. No. And so this is where you also have to know, like, you have to, I also had to revisit when I started. You know, this started when I was maybe like 25. And so it's so funny, like a lot of people say, dang, you first tried it at 25, that's late in the game, but whatever, <laughs> you know, I was 25. You need to go all the way back to the very first time you did it and why you did it, whether it was through peer pressure, through emotional pain, like you need to locate all the whys, the where you did it, the why you did it, what state you were in, how you felt after, um, because all of this is important to you locating the root, right? So whether you start it because of an emotional disturbance or whether you start it because of peer pressure, those are two totally different situations, if you understand what I'm saying. And so I, I basically got to the point where I was like, you know, that this is toward like the final stages of closing the doors is when you start asking yourself, what are the actual ramifications if I don't stop? What are the ramifications if I do stop? Meaning, what are the benefits if I stop? And what are the ramifications if I don't? Now, this could get really scary if you're honest with yourself, okay? I very literally, I don't, I don't have it with me, but I have a journal that I write in every day now. I've been very consistent with that. And I had like, I'll give you an example. I remember filling up two sheets, possibly like this size, okay? One was ramifications of stopping. The other was ramifications of if I didn't stop. Now, let me tell you something. The list of ramifications of if I didn't stop, I was like, oh, hell no. You need to visually see this. And I remember putting it, um, putting a few of those up on my wall in my room and I drew an actual like picture to visually see every day of the ramifications of not stopping. Now, keep in mind, I was still engaging it at this time, but this is a part of the visualization, the prayer, the meditation, the mindfulness, because whatever you want to call it, I used visualization. That visualization, so for example, instead of thinking about, oh, like, where am I going to get my next, you know, joint from or whatever, I would visualize what I would be doing if I wasn't doing that. So I would always, like, have these visualizations of, myself being sober. So that became a permanent fantasy that I would entertain daily, even though I was still engaging. This is important because what this is doing, when you want to manifest anything here, okay, anything, visualization, they tell you, is is the key, okay? And this goes with stopping an addiction also. You need to visualize yourself sober and what you would be doing instead you need to pray. Prayer is nothing but focused energy. So we don't got to get into this is not religious. So like I said, prayer is focused energy. Okay. So I would, I would apply focused energy daily visualization to rid me of this. Okay. And so, and, and not feeling guilt because I was still doing it. I had relieved myself of that, which I was very happy, happy about. And so thinking about all of 
these positive things and visualizing yourself not being attached to this thing is super important. And um, a lot of people say that they have addictive personalities. And to end on this note, you know, you can use your addictive personality. See, the thing is, is that you have what what addictive personality means to me is that you have some form of OCD, which means you can focus on something. You can repeatedly do something over and over that you have discipline, actually. An addictive personality, when applied to a positive addiction or something, when you become addicted to something that's elevating you, like really think about how crazy shit could get for your life fast. You understand? So use your addictive personality trait that you have if you want to claim that and really make it positive. There's nothing negative here. It's how we utilize our energy here. Okay, so to recap, basically, you got to replace this with something constructive. Use prayer, meditation, or mindfulness, which is focused energy. Visualization, which is great for manifesting anything here. Um, Self-awareness, huge key. Admitting you want to change, why you want to change. Writing a letter to these demons that are going to come for you. Let me tell you, I laugh at all the all these demons I see coming from me. And I use demons in a very like lighthearted way, okay? It's just because it's funny and, and you know, you guys know. But like they try to come for me. I just be like, I just laugh. Like, y'all tried, that was cute. But y'all getting away from me. <laughs> Shop clothes. Breaking up with these parasites, okay? I don't want nothing clinging on to my aura anymore. I don't want I don't want nothing, okay? And make sure you make that list of the ramifications of what will happen if you don't stop. Because like I said, this shit is ridden with nanotechnology now. And I, I'm waiting for that to come out at some point, okay? Because I know it is. That they are literally... When I had the vision of cages being placed over people's minds and auras it was horrifying like you are when you think about how much time you have wasted it's like when I thought about that and thought about where I'm trying to take my life and everything I'm trying to accomplish it was like oh no this door got closed boo <laughs> and so I pray that the door closes for you quickly quickly there's a will, there's a way. Be strong. Thank you for tuning in today. You all be well. Later. Bye, demon.